In this video, I'm going to explain why you shouldn't ignore those little skin tags that so many of us have, especially if you have more than one. You need to think of them like the engine warning light on your car. They're an opportunity to catch an issue early rather than keep driving around, letting things getting worse, where they become much harder to fix later on. I'm Dr. Dan Mags, I'm a GP here in the UK, and I didn't know about this important link when I left medical school. In fact, the study that identified it wasn't even published until a year after I qualified, and it took a few more years before I picked it up in my own learning. As a result, I've missed a lot of opportunities to warn people, and I don't want that to happen to you. So today, I'm going to explain to you the underlying issue that anyone with multiple skin tags might be facing so that you know the full significance and can take appropriate steps. I used to see skin tags in the same way that many doctors do. A quick and easy case. Often, you're just confirming what the patient already knows. Hi doc, I've got this. I think it's just a skin tag and I wanted to double check it wasn't something more serious. Yep, it's a skin tag. And then I'd go on to offer some reassurance because skin tags themselves are not dangerous. Um, they don't turn into cancer or anything nasty like that. Unlike warts, they're not contagious, so you can't pass them on to other people and they don't spread around your body if left untreated. If you've got multiple skin tags, then it's for an entirely different reason. And here in the UK, we generally don't remove skin tags on the National Health Service. It would be considered a cosmetic procedure unless it was getting irritated or rubbed by clothing, for example. But removing skin tags is like bailing water out of a sinking boat. If you don't fix the hole, the water is going to keep coming in. And with skin tags, unless we address the underlying cause, you can take as many off as you like, but they'll just keep coming back. However, if you address the underlying cause, they'll often just shrink and disappear on their own. And skin tags typically occur in a few distinct areas on the body. And whilst the location of any rash, mole or other skin condition is usually a really important clue about the cause, in the case of skin tags, it can be really misleading. Now, I'm going to tell you where skin tags commonly occur and I want to see if you can spot the connection. In the armpits, around the neck, in the groin, sometimes on the eyelids and occasionally under breasts. Did you get it? Well, they're all areas where skin tends to rub other skin, which might lead you to think that skin tags are caused by skin rubbing other skin. But there's two major problems with that. You see, there are a lot of people out there with skin rubbing together who don't develop skin tags. And the second problem is that sometimes skin tags occur on areas where skin doesn't rub. You see, if you just consider that it's all about skin rubbing together, you'll miss the real cause. And yeah, there are many theories about why skin tags grow, but we only start to see the wood for the trees when we stand back and take a look at the big picture. So we think there's probably a genetic component to skin tags, and some skin tags are probably caused by viruses. Skin tags are also commonly found in people who are overweight or obese. They're common in people with type 2 diabetes, and they're also more common as we age. They're also common in pregnant women. And it's the common element that connects these last few things together that gives us our strongest clue today. Because these are all states where we find raised levels of the hormone insulin. But what does raised insulin levels have to do with skin tags? After all, insulin's a hormone that's produced by the pancreas in response to elevated blood glucose levels. Its main job is to help get glucose out of our bloodstream and into our cells. And that's the reason why it's often used in the treatment of diabetes. But insulin has got a lot of jobs all over the body, including acting as a growth hormone. And when we look at what skin tags actually are, they're just an overgrowth of skin cells, some collagen and a blood supply. Insulin promotes cell growth and division, including in skin cells. Insulin enhances collagen production, and it also stimulates the formation of new blood supplies. So, could it be that raised insulin levels are the missing piece of the puzzle? Well, in 2010, a study confirmed that the presence of multiple skin tags was strongly associated with insulin resistance. So what is insulin resistance? Insulin resistance is a condition where the cells of the body become less responsive to the effects of insulin. The pancreas has to produce more insulin in order to have the same effect. 
It's like the cells are becoming deaf to the sound of insulin. So the pancreas has to shout louder. So when someone has insulin resistance, there's a lot more insulin swimming around the body than someone who hasn't got it. Insulin resistance left unchecked can lead to type 2 diabetes. It's very common in people who are overweight or obese, and it's more common as we age. Women also naturally become more insulin resistant during pregnancy, which, as we learned earlier, are precisely the conditions where skin tags are prevalent. So we're starting to see the bigger picture that skin tags can often be the first visible sign of insulin resistance, which can progress to type 2 diabetes, which is worrying, but unfortunately it doesn't end there. Insulin resistance is just one element of an even bigger problem called the metabolic syndrome, which puts you at massively increased risk of heart disease, strokes, and a whole host of other conditions. So hopefully now you understand why these seemingly innocent little skin tags can be the first sign of the development of a much more serious metabolic syndrome. And you might be wondering, well, yeah, I have a few skin tags, sure, but are there any other signs that I might be insulin resistant or have the metabolic syndrome? And that is a great question, and I've made a video all about that exact subject for you. And you can watch that by clicking here. That's gonna go through all the other signs that you might be insulin resistant, as well as cover what makes up the metabolic syndrome. Thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one.